I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. Welcome to the What I Want to Know show. We are talking this week about a very important group. You've heard us talk about it many times before as we enter into another severe weather season for this area of the country. It's important to know more about what needs to be done before severe weather hits. And the National Weather Service needs volunteers like you to be able to help out when it comes to severe weather spotting to help them do a better job as to keep track of what's going on in the field. You can see underneath a storm what a radar cannot see, and that is where Skywarn volunteers come in. Skywarn is, again, a volunteer organization. They spot for the National Weather Service. They look at what's going on. They call that information back to the National Weather Service, and that information from on the ground is something that can really help out when it comes to strong storms, and we'll prove that to you coming up here in just a little bit. The National Weather Service covers the entire continental United States. That includes portions of the Tennessee River Valley, and again, this is something to watch out for. A very good page to go to, weather.gov, if you'd like to see more about what goes on. Now, the National Weather Service is divided up into many different areas to where you can see a lot more of how the patchwork quilt is arranged on here. Now, the Tennessee River Valley area is covered by three National Weather Service areas. The Morristown one that covers eastern Tennessee, Huntsville in northern areas of Alabama, where we also cover around northeastern DeKalb and Jackson counties, and parts of southern middle Tennessee, and then Peachtree City, National Weather Service in northern Georgia from Atlanta covers a good portion of our area as well. The National Weather Service in Morristown is going to be offering in-person Skywarn training for the first time since the pandemic. And this is going to be significant to get everybody back together again. Again, with hopefully everybody doing some social distancing with flu and all sorts of other stuff going on out there. The spotter program was started a long time ago back into around the 60s and 70s. And it's a way for people to learn more about what to report to the National Weather Service and a good opportunity, again, to serve your community by keeping track of what's going on. There are field guides available online written by National Weather Service meteorologists and personnel to help you understand what to look for what to look for before the storm hits, as the storm is going through, and as the storm is moving out, what to report back to the National Weather Service on there. It is a good opportunity, again, for learning about safety as well. You may learn a little bit more about what to look for on National Weather Service radars. You may learn about the powerful effects of these storms and why it's important to respect them. But the information that is in here that is provided by volunteers as the storm moves through is what could help save lives down the line and hopefully that could interest you in volunteering for this teaching you the who what when where and what is going on situation of a storm moving through a particular area this is something that really matters because it targeting the storm and then seeing what's happened as the storm moves through you can warn the people ahead of the storm what may be heading their way and tell them that this could be a threat to life and property and to make certain that they are in a safe place and really get the message across on there. I have seen kids at these meetings as young as about eight or nine years old. There's technically no age limit. There is a chance to learn what goes on, again, for Skywarn, a profile and a way to make certain you follow the procedure of reporting. You're there to report the information. You're not there to do any forecasting. That's left to the National Weather Service. But kids as young as eight or nine years old can still see what's going on. They'll give you a toll-free number when you are graduated from the course, and you should be able to call that number directly to the National Weather Service and say, this is John or Jane Smith from this particular location, this particular state. I just saw a rotating uh, wall cloud going on just past my house moving northeast at about 35 miles an hour and would look like a rotation producing a tornado. Also, I saw baseball-sized hail and damaging winds. That's important. That's the data that the National Weather Service needs for things like protecting the community. Uh, I've seen kids who have been traumatized by weather their parents want to do something to help out. These meetings are a very good opportunity to ask questions and to give kids a more positive control over what 
seems to be to them as young as they are, and it can be very traumatizing when this happens to them, uh, getting affected by severe weather in one form or another. It could be a, a way to kind of get control over an uncontrollable situation. So I would recommend it for kids with parental support. Um, one thing I want to make clear on this, that this is a spotter course. This is not a chase course. If you want to learn how to chase storms, more power to you, but do it safely and only do it if you've been trained by experts, period, end of sentence. Don't argue with me on this. This is, again, something that is very different. A lot of storm chasers started off as storm spotters. So this is something that can really help out under those types of circumstances. Now, the National Weather Service, again, says you don't need to be in law enforcement. You don't need to be an amateur radio operator to do a to become an amateur sp uh, spotter. It's great if you are because that's extra experience to help out, but it's not required of that. All you have to be is you, and you have to have access to a phone or the email system that they have on the National Weather Service websites to report that information back to them. We need, again, eyes and ears out there, and you could help provide that. National Weather Service in Morristown is having some of the first in-person training sessions since before the pandemic. So it's kind of nice to be able to see this happen once again. And the first meetings are going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks. The ones for Hamilton County, there's two of them now uh, coming up. We posted this on our social media pages, and all of this information is available through their website at weather.gov slash MRX. So very easy to take a look at that. And if you didn't have a chance to, again, catch that, we'll have more about that coming up a little later. But all you have to do is go to weather.gov gov gov uh, that'll bring up the national weather service website and then just click on the area around chattanooga and that'll take you to the national weather service homepage. and right there in the news headlines is the information you need that'll bring up the training classes the contact information all of that stuff really interesting to have now incidentally the national weather service in morristown does have a virtual training session that if you can't make it to that, and there's also a unit from the University Center of Atmospheric Research uh, and the National Center for Atmospheric Research that has an online Skywarn spotter training. They ask you to take the course and pass, but if you do that, they ask you to attend a National Weather Service training session if you are able to do so. They're not issued in all of the counties around there. Same thing for National Weather Service Morristown, so please consider that out there. The number of courses usually peak in the spring. That's about the best time for severe weather, but they also happen in the fall sometimes as well. So keep that in mind if you have the opportunity to do so. Again, they don't last too long. It's an hour, hour and a half out of your time, and you get the opportunity to do a job of helping the National Weather Service. Now, let me prove this to you to see what goes on here. This is something that is very important to take a look at. This is our own radar system that shows a little bit more about what's happening. If we take the information here and just for the sake of argument, we're going to say a storm system is passing around the area between Cleveland and Athens, Tennessee, and it's heading east at about 45 miles per hour. We can take that information and plot it out here on our computer system, but we do not have, again, uh, specific plots of Skywarn data on here for anything. What this shows is the storm system, again, making its way across the area, heading east from I-75 and around Cleveland, and it shows where these places will be hit from a hypothetical storm that is just around I-75 in Cleveland. Your information that gets to the National Weather Service before this point, when a tornado warning or a severe thunderstorm warning is issued, can help the people in this cone, in this area that may be affected, and let them know through what you witnessed what they might be able to expect. That's the cool thing. That Your information could save a life somewhere down the line. It's a great opportunity, again, to get out into the community. You don't have to go anyplace. You can be a Skywarn spotter from your school classroom. You can be one from home. You can be one on the roadway safely, again, of course, all the way on through there. But this information plotted can give people an idea as to what's going on and 
that's what you can provide. So that's what Skywarn is all about. And if you have information or would like to join up with stuff like this, we'll be posting the links on the website information for this video. And of course, you can go to our website, WDEF.com, find out more about that. Any questions, let me know. Email address is aonic at WDEF.com. Would love to hear from you. Uh, please consider becoming a Skywarn volunteer. We need you. We'd love to have more people out there. The more people that are watching, the safer we will all be. So something to really consider if you'd like to have some community spirit, join along and be a volunteer. I've been a Skywarn spotter since 1980, if that gives you an idea. And that's back when I was certain years old, but that was a long time ago. So I enjoy it. I love it. I recommend it to everybody. So please consider that. I'll have more coming up on a new What I Want to Know show that'll be coming up later on next week. So join us for that. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us. And more information about Skywarn Weather Science, stick around and find out more from the What I Want to Know show on News 12.